Greetings to you. I'm a Hindu. My name is Sandeep. And uh, I've been uh, watching your videos on YouTube since long time. Uh, being a Hindu, I do respect other religions. I do uh, respect Allah, Prophet Muhammad. I started my school uh, in my childhood in a Catholic school where I was taught about Bible and Christianity and Lord Jesus. And uh, later on, uh, after fifth standard, I came to know about my own religion, being born in a Hindu family. And today, I do, uh, at times, get attracted towards uh, other religions. Okay, there is some common link between all religions. I have a basic question to you, doctor. Basically, I am from the science background, a pharmacy guy. Today, I'm authorized uh, financial consultant. So, today, what I look out there in the market is uh, many religions exist on planet Earth. If human being is the same, if human organs are the same, if the human body system follows the same heartbeats, blood flow, the same blood, the same ears, the same nose, if everything is the same, the creator has to be the same, the supreme power is the same. So if the supreme power is the same, why do so many religions exist on earth today? What is going to be future now onwards? Because if I go as per theoretical books, as per history, before thousands of years, Hinduism existed, then came uh, Lord Jesus, then uh, Prophet Muhammad, and now today, what I see in front of my eyes is there are many religions and every religion has its own pros and cons. So, being a human, I get confused. I am a Hindu, I should uh, respect my religion, as well as being a human being, I should respect other religions. So, what is the final truth and uh, what is going to the future for centuries ahead? The brother asked a very good question that there are so many different religions more than 4,000 years back was Hinduism, then Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came 2,000 years back, or Christianity, then Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came 1,400 years back. Some things are similar, some things are contradicting. There's so much of confusion. God, our creator, is one. Human body is the same. Creator has to be same. So why this confusion? It's a very good question. The reply is given in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19. It says, in Nadina in the Lail Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of God is Islam. That is peace acquired by submitting our will to God. Almighty God only gave one religion to the human beings. As I said earlier, Almighty God has only sent one religion. But he has sent many messengers. When he sent messengers who got messages, by the passage of time, the message got changed. Again, a new messenger came. He brought a fresh message. Again, the people changed it. Again, a new messenger came. It happened for many years, down the ages. But all the messengers brought, the basic message was the same. Almighty God, the last and final message was the Quran. Now, you will ask me this question that why did God reveal the Quran 1400 years back? Why didn't he reveal the Quran directly? Reveal the Quran directly? No confusion. You know, my son, he wants to become a doctor. He tells me, Father, Abba, why do you put me into nursery, then junior KG, senior KG, first standard? Why you put me in school? Directly put me into medical college. I said, son, if you want to be a doctor, first you have to go to nursery, pre-primary, primary school, secondary school, medical college, then you'll become a doctor. You can't directly enter a medical college because you won't understand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, he knows very well that human being would not be able to grasp the complete message of the Quran if it was revealed earlier. 1400 years ago, Almighty God, who is our creator, he knows this time, the time has come where human beings can understand the message. So that's the reason previously he sent messages which were there but not complete because human beings could not understand, could not grasp. As the message changed, he sent a new message, a new messenger. That's the reason all the messages that came before the Quran, they were meant for a particular group of people and meant to be followed for a particular time period. All the messengers that came before the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad were only sent for a particular group of people 
and was meant to be followed till a new message came. Almighty God, He knew 1400 years ago was the time when human beings can understand the final message of the Quran. He revealed it. And He sent the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Since Quran was the last and final message, it was not only meant for the Muslims or the Arabs, it wasn't meant for one particular group of people, it was meant for the whole of humanity. All the messengers that came before were meant for a particular group of people, and the message was supposed to be followed for a particular time period. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger, he was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs, he was sent for the whole of humanity. But now today, you ask me, why are there different religions? Our Creator sent only one religion. We human beings kept on changing. But even in the corrupted form, I have a formula. I have a formula which will not antagonize any human being. I tell all these human beings, at least believe that there is one scripture which is 100% the word of God. So the Hindus would not mind agreeing, I believe Veda to be 100% word of God. The Christians would say, I do not mind believing Bible to be 100% word of God. The Muslim will say, I don't mind believing Quran to be 100% word of God. So I tell them, okay, now let us agree to follow what is common in all these scriptures. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. Let's not fight over the differences. Let us agree to follow what is common and at least we'll be sure that what is common in all the three scriptures, this at least minimum is 100% the word of God. What is different may be the word of God, may not be the word of God, that we can discuss tomorrow. Now, when we do a research, and I being a student of comparative religion, I have studied the Vedas, I have studied the Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, Quran. Now, when I do research, I've come to know that all these scriptures say that there's one God. All the scriptures say that God has got no image, has got no photograph, no painting, no statue, no idol. All the scriptures say that Almighty God does not beget nor is He begotten. All the scriptures say that the last and final messenger to come is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I have quoted in this session many verses from Hindu scripture that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. I have quoted from the Bible. I have quoted from the Quran. So at least let us agree to follow what is common. Bible, Vedas, Quran, all three say that you should not have alcohol. And I've quoted that in my earlier answer. All three say that you should not gamble. All three say that you should not have pork. So let us agree to follow what is common. So we have to agree that there's one God. You have to believe Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger of God. You should not have alcohol. You should not have pork. To pray, we have to do the sujood. All these are common points. So I'm asking the question that if you say you are a Hindu, and you say that you respect other religions. I'm asking the question, do you believe that there's one God? As per books, I do. Do you believe that idol worship is prohibited? That's a confusing area. It's very clear in the Hindu scriptures. Yajurve, chapter 32, verse number 3, Na Tasirpati Ma Asti, of that God there is no pratima, there is no photograph, no painting, no image, no idol, no statue. Same thing is repeated in Sveta Setar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19. Na asti. Of that God, there is no pratima, no image, no photograph, no painting, no statue, no idol. What's confusing, brother? I mean, uh, today my knowledge is uh, just like an uh, infant. No, no, your knowledge is like infant. When a person of knowledge talks, you should believe it. True. So why don't you believe it then? No, as I said, I do respect uh, Prophet Muhammad, I do... No respect. Respecting is one thing, following is the other thing. If you respect a person, you have to follow his guidance. So Only again, the question goes in the same direction, what I was uh, asking to you, that if I am a Hindu, if I believe in Hinduism, but still, when I step out of my home, I have to follow my colleagues, the other society members, human beings on the earth. Is it a must? Suppose the other society members start robbing. If your other human beings start robbing, even you start robbing. Brother, if your friends start robbing, will you rob? I will have to defend myself. Will you rob, yes or no? If somebody is robbing me. 
No, no, you said that you have to follow the other human beings, other society. If your other friends start robbing other people, will you start robbing? Will you rob others? I don't think so. There is a point in robbing others. Okay, because you know robbing is wrong. So that time you will not follow society. Follow the society when it is right. Do not follow when it's wrong. God has given you grey matter, brain. Correct? So if your Hindu friends are going against the Veda, will you follow Veda or your Hindu friends? They have to follow what is written in the books. Yes, forget about them. I'm asking about you. If your Hindu scripture says don't do idol worship, will you do idol worship? No, then I will not. So now do you believe idol worship is wrong? Again, as I said, I have to study more. When will you study? Today or tomorrow? When? <laughs> Maybe today or tomorrow. Okay, fine. I have quoted so many references from the Hindu scripture about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, I do. If you believe, don't you have to follow his commandments? I may have to. Why may? Again, I'm not If you here. may believe in, then you may. If you do believe in, you do have to follow. It's simple English. If you say, maybe he is a messenger of God, then you can say, maybe I'll follow him. When you say, surely the messenger of God, then you have to follow him, surely, why? But Will a messenger of God deceive you? But again, do I have to be a Muslim to follow Prophet Muhammad? No, no, Islam? you have to be a good Hindu also. You have to be a good Hindu and a good Christian to follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's where the whole uh, thing If you are not a good Hindu, if you are not a good Christian, you will never follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Hindu scripture says, the Antim Rishi, the Kalki Autar is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I gave references, you know, if you want I can give again. Do you want me to give the references again of Prophet Muhammad in the Hindu scriptures? I did listen to your references. I need to go through them. Fine. So inshallah go today. Tomorrow, I would give you the first chance. And there's a lady there. You too, I would give the first chance. Then I will call you a truthful person. Go today, Google, check on the net. I gave at least 100 references. There are more than 100 in my lecture. If you see on Hindu scriptures, talking about Prophet Muhammad talking about one God, talking not to have alcohol, not to have pork, not to gamble. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. At least what is common, you should agree. So when you are talking about getting human beings together, I'm giving you a formula which will not offend you. I'm not telling you follow that which is not mentioned in the Hindu scripture. I'm telling you follow what is mentioned in Hindu scripture and the Quran. 100% you will be a good Hindu, good Christian, and even enter into Islam. May not be good Muslim. At least enter... And then your scripture says you have to follow the guidance of the last messenger. You have to follow the Quran. So if you follow the Quran correctly and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad you will be a good Muslim. And I'm waiting that inshallah if we can do it today, tomorrow, inshallah we can interact. Thank you very much, doctor.